Welcome to Breaking Banks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Breaking Banks Europe. Uh, I'm Francesca Liberti, and I will be uh, hosting this episode. Today, we are talking um, with uh, two very nice guests. I had the, the chance to chit chat with them five minutes ago, and they are really super funny and, and interesting people to talk with. Uh, this is the sneak peek of one of the most important uh, European fintech events that are actually coming up very soon. It's a Finnovate Europe, which is going to be held in London on the 14th and 15th of March. And as I said before, I have the pleasure to have here uh, Greg Palmer, VP of strategy and host of the show. Hi, Greg. Nice to have hey. you here. Thanks for having me. And also Theodora Lowe, founder of Unconventional Ventures and a quite well-known face within the uh, Finnovate family. Hi, I Theo. just caused trouble. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining so guys, let's start really from, from the basics. Uh, so I know for sure that uh, everybody uh, everybody in our audience know very well Finnovate, um, but let's give us a little bit of an overview of what the event is and especially how it evolved during the years. Because what I see is that you guys are around from quite some years actually. Greg, maybe you want to, to tell us something about the, the show. Yeah, no, absolutely happy to. So you're right. We have been doing these Finnovate events for a little while now. Um, and one of the things that really sets our shows apart from the others is the demo, the, the emphasis on live demos. We put innovative companies on, on stage and we give them seven minutes to show their latest technology. No slides allowed, no canned video allowed. Really, we ask the, the demoers to show their technology functioning in as close to a real world environment as we can get within the confines of our hotel ballroom. So um, that's what's really allowed us to continue to grow. Um, we have had the European event in London for most of the years we've been running it. We did do a version in Berlin shortly before the pandemic. And when I say shortly before, I mean like two weeks before everything kind of <laughs> shut down in 2020. Um, and we came back into London last year for our first live event in Europe since the pandemic. And we were really blown away by the number of people, just the amount of energy that we had in the space, some really cool technologies on display. And also it was really fun just having everybody back in the room again. The audience was clearly up for it. Everybody was just bouncing off the walls to connect with each other. And this year we're gonna be building off of that momentum. We're going back to the same venue, which is really close to the O2 Arena for those of you who are in London. Um, and we've got a great lineup of presenting companies, demoing companies, I should say, and speakers as well. So, you know, all things told, uh, it's going to be a really fun event for us. We've got a couple of new pieces to try out this time around, which I'm sure we'll talk about in just a moment. But it's been really good for us to just see kind of the industry come back together after a couple of years of forced hiatus. Nice. So great, Greg. And I have to say, your format is something very special because uh, I, I know so many founders that are actually super scared to get on that stage like I, I i need to have my demo super perfectly running so it's quite it's quite a thing within the industry um, well, it is true that yeah. it is give you a little bit scary i just have to say one thing really quickly on that we do yeah, actually sure. offer coaching and support for all the companies nice. who come to our events um, that's something that i actually do myself so while it is something that can be a little bit scary i totally get that there are definitely ways you can make it a little bit more manageable um, and we do try and put everybody in a position to succeed up there on stage we don't have any interest in watching somebody crash and burn so we like to give no, them all the course. support we can of well, course, Greg likes really to nice. mention to people like, you know, please be kind because it is a little <laughs> bit scary to get on stage. Mm -hmm. Greg, you didn't tell people that you do turn off the mic, though. We do. Yes, show. that's true. If you hit the seven what? minute deadline, we do actually ring a bell. And if you keep going past the bell, we will cut the mic on you. I think our AV team particularly relishes this because they have to watch a lot of conferences where they have to hear people go keep going. And so for them, we, we put the <laughs> responsibility in their hands. And I think it is something that they quite enjoy being like, ah, 705, time's up, you're done. And then it gets really <laughs> awkward. I have to come out and kind of usher them off stage. Um, it's actually probably my least favorite thing to do. Everybody else seems to enjoy it immensely, though. So uh, there we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you have to be quite well trained, actually, if you want to participate to <laughs> Finnovate. That, that's definitely <laughs> true. So, Theo, what's your, as I said before, you are quite a, a well-known face. Uh, I mean, you have participated to, uh, to Finnovate as a speaker quite, uh, quite a lot of times. So what's your experience of the event? I think it's like, um, what do we used to call it? I, I know Brad calls it uh, the, the Fun Track Disney line, but I like to call <laughs> it as a Thanksgiving. It's like a Thanksgiving meal. Um, every time when we get together, you know, like how um, for all the holiday gatherings or, or audience in Europe, it's, it's like Christmas getting together with family that you hadn't seen for a long time. There's always the, oh, hi, how are you doing? Hugs and 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 all of that familiar faces. And then you just kind of like, okay, all right. Well, you know, we have we have some things we need to talk about. Um, it's, it's as always drama, but good drama. Um <laughs> And I have to say, I've been very lucky. And uh, thank you, Greg and Katie and everybody for welcoming me um, in a lot of the different shows. The one thing I love the most, um, and I don't say this lightly, is is the family. It's literally like a family. Seeing Greg and seeing everyone there, it's like it. my year does not complete without seeing oh, these that's so nice. people. Um, and I think I love the show. It has evolved over the years. One of my favorites is always the, um, the all-star panel. Greg, you guys added that a few years ago with all the different analysts uh, getting on stage and give their time to talk about what are the trends? What are things that we need to um, pay attention to? And my most favorite one uh, coming out from a recent Finnebe last year was um, a all-star investor panel. Mm. It was on the last day. Remember, Greg? It was in the morning. Yeah. And it was all women all women <laughs> VC panel and it was so That's quite impressive. yes that the hotel staff I was watching from the balcony the hotel staff have to bring out rolls of chairs because people were standing it was standing room only so it was it was impressive looking at all the women talking about the investing trends we didn't talk about diversity they just talk about what everyone would be talking about in fintech show um where is the money going where are people investing what's interesting what's not and it was very, very well attended. So kudos to the Finnovate team for not just putting out amazing content, but also finding people with voices that others should really like pay attention to. Yeah, let's let's maybe double click on this. Uh, um, so you said that they were all women, right? And many times we talk about women in the financial services only to talk about diversity. Um, which I found it always very weird. So actually next next month, I'm going to go uh, to Africa, to Nairobi, to talk in a panel. They invited me in a panel to talk about diversity in the financial sector. So I'm really like uh, every time they ask for a woman, it's because of that, which is, I mean, we, we can talk about also uh, other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that uh, um, in Finnovate, you care a lot about diversity and to make sure that um, uh, there is quite a high percentage of women speaking. Um, and I know from our previous conversation that you have quite a nice uh, anecdote of some conversation <laughs> between uh, you and Theo some years ago. <laughs> Probably she raised the right questions. <laughs> is that correct? <laughs> Well, I think uh, it wasn't necessarily that she raised the right questions. We already were aware of it. You know, I think this is one of those things where if you work in the financial technology space, particularly as a conference organizer, you are confronted with the reality of your speakers constantly because their pictures are up on your web page. You can see the names that are on the agenda. Um, and in Theo, we had a conversation at one of our New York shows several years back where, I mean, basically all Theo did was kind of take that picture and say, look at these are all of the men who are speaking at this event. Um, and so, you know, we had a we had a good conversation there. I think there was a collective airing of grievances, but this was something which we uh, had been really looking at for a couple years already, and we had struggled, as you can probably imagine, to get to this sort of 50-50 gender split amongst our speaker faculty. Now, a couple of things have happened since then. We've continued to prioritize this, but we're also finding that there are more women to choose from when we look at our speaker pool. So that is potentially some positive momentum there from within the industry. But it's also something that we're really aware that we have a position, uh, we have a little bit of, well, we have a literal stage that we can put 
people on. And so for us, being able to elevate people and elevate certain voices onto that stage is something which we care passionately about. Now, with the speakers that we pick, uh, that we have control over, we do have a 50-50 uh, male, female gender balance up on our stage. We had one last year for Finnovate Europe as well. It's something that we're going to continue to strive for. But part of it was, you know, this conversation that I had with Theo where she pushed us just a little bit. And I think that was a, a it was a good timing for that push. It was also just really validating to say, hey, somebody else is noticing this too. Other people <laughs> care about this. And it really just cemented the fact that that was something that we needed to focus on. Theo, I don't know. How do you remember that conversation? I think it was a, ultimately a very positive one. But at the time, I mean, it was a little bit spicy. <laughs> <laughs> It was interesting. Um, I think there were people around us that they kind of just backed away. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very animated conversation. Let's put it this way. Um, you were passionate, Theo. That's it. <laughs> I still am very passionate. I recently wrote an article called "Diversity of Socks" um, because I noticed <laughs> I noticed a conference which I did not participate, but I ended up getting dozens of pictures from people that said, "Oh, look at this." Um, there was more diversity of sock colors and there were diversity of faces. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, fast forward 2023, we're still where we are, but going back to where I was saying, I, I very much, and I don't say this lightly, I very, very, very much appreciate how intentional the effort has been on behalf of the Finnovate team. It's not easy. Um, I, I think for those of us who sit, um, at, at, you know, like the audience and look up like, oh, come on, you know, there's got to be women, there's got to be um, people from underrepresented communities, there's got to be different faces you can put on there. We could see it because it's easy to see, but there are a lot of challenges in the back. I think one of the pushbacks I often get from conferences is, well, you know, we need to put faces who are familiar to others so that they can attract um, so why do you actually, show. what do you think it's the problem? Because as you said, there are a lot of challenges as an um, event organizer, mm -hmm. because I, I'm sure that many times it's not that we don't want people to go on stage, but it's very, it's very hard to find sometimes. So what do you think it's the, it's, it's a real problem? They don't, they don't look enough um, there are no many women in high positions. What's what's the deal? So it depends on who you ask, right? Um, and and I think it can be overcome. It's not we can put rockets in space. I'm sure we can find people on stage, um, <laughs> but it's it's a matter of intentional. So I go back to being intentional. What I've seen the Finovay team does is they're very intentional in asking others. Who else do you recommend? What would yeah. you like to put on stage, right? That's the number one thing is ask others because you can't keep going back to your little black book and say, well, you know, here are the people that we had last year. Let's go back and invite these people. It doesn't work that way. And I think the other part is, which I often get, get people saying, well, you know, they're not well known. Well, <laughs> someone has to start from somewhere. I remember the reason why I love the Finovay team so much and Greg, I don't know if you remember this, the first time my first ever speaking engagement was with Finovay, Finovay Europe. Actually, that was when you guys did it in Excel. And you're really part of it. Yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, and all the way on the and 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 I remember this. It wasn't because I had spoken before in FinTech. I never did. I did a bunch of reports. I did a bunch of stuff, but I never got on stage to talk about FinTech. Yeah. And at that time, you know, the, the team um, that was before Katie, they said, well, you know, Theo, you should come on stage. And I was like, wow. Uh, okay. And, and that is the difference, I think, is to find different voices and put them on stage, regardless of whether or not they have spoken in 15 other events. And I think that is the key part is to give someone that first chance. Yeah, that's that, that's very much true. Also, you know, you, you give some freshness also to the mm -hmm. to the content of the conference because Absolutely. at a certain point, if we are always the same circle of people, why should we come to the conference, right? Yeah. yeah, one thing I can just kind of chime in on here as well. And Theo, I don't know if this was your experience, but I think frequently, you know, I host the Finnovate podcast. I work with a lot of demoing companies who come across our stage and I'm constantly confronted by people who 
are really interesting or maybe have really interesting things to say, but they don't necessarily know that they're interesting. They don't know that they have something <laughs> or a unique angle to say. And I think one of the challenges, which I embrace wholeheartedly, is looking at people and saying, you know, what is your story? What do you have to share that other people can't share. And I think this is one of those things where all of us, this is a human problem. All of us kind of think, well, the things that I know are obvious things. Other people I'm sure know them. Other people know these experiences. Uh, we tend to sort of assume other people are smarter, have more expertise than ourselves. And this really manifests in parts of the population which have been categorically excluded from some of these opportunities to demonstrate their expertise. And so a lot of what we try and do is find people who we know have those interesting stories and elevate them and put them up on that stage. One of the other challenges that we have with an event like Finnovate, with any event really, to some extent, when you run an event like this, you're kind of holding up a mirror to the industry that your event is in. You're basically saying, here is the state of the industry. You know, these are the companies that are doing interesting things. These are the trends within the industry that are um, that people are really working on right now. Here's the the learnings that some of our senior leaders have undergone. Um, and part of that reflection is, you know, a current snapshot of where we are from a tech standpoint. Part of it is from a social standpoint. And so this is where, you know, you can say you can hold up a mirror and say, you know, there are actually some really uncomfortable realities in that mirror. Well, that means that there's uncomfortable realities in real life, right? And and so yeah. what we've really tried to do is say, where can we find, not necessarily, you know, we're, we're going to still show a proper representation of where the industry is, but we're going to try and really zoom out on that mirror and say, well, okay, well, where else can we find, can we, can we angle it just slightly differently? Can we broaden it a little bit and pull some of these voices in? And one of the things that I think we, um, that's been really gratifying for us is that we, we obviously track speaker scores at the end of the events. We like to know which sessions were more popular, which sessions were uh, people thought maybe less interesting. And as we've made this a priority, um, trying to create more inclusive stage, our speaker scores have not suffered at all. They have continued to go up. And so the idea that you know you have to sacrifice something in order to bring certain voices in is categorically false. It really does give people something new to think about. And Theo, I loved your point. You know, we, we put an investor panel up there um, that was completely female. We didn't talk about it at all because why do you need to talk about it? That's not exactly. why they're up there. And this is one of those challenges for us because on the one hand, we want to be able to sort of say, hey, check this out. There's this really cool thing that we're doing. We're trying really hard here. On the other hand, you kind of have to play it cool because you can't make a too big of a deal <laughs> out of it or else you kind of undercut the very message that you're trying to support. So I really appreciate the opportunity to come on a show like this and kind of talk about some of these things because there is a lot of work that goes into it on the back end. And it's something which, again, our entire team is really passionate about. And it's really good to see that these speakers are coming and they're doing well. They're sharing insights that the audience is really enjoying. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to see another round of it in London. We have a great speaker lineup. We've got some really good experts who are both male and female. And at the yeah, end maybe, of the day, hopefully maybe the audience Greg, doesn't even really notice. Yeah, maybe, Greg, we can actually give a little bit of a, of a sneak preview of some topics and, and cool stories uh, uh, the audience is going to see uh, in March. What do you think? Can you yeah. can you give us something uh, something you're cooking? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously the content that everybody's always interested in prior to the event is what's going to, what are the demos going to be talking about? What are the yeah. innovators going to be working on? And we've got a good group of companies who are set to take the stage. We're actually still signing a couple more. So there will be some additions from here. Um, but we're pulling in companies from all over the world um, and from a wide variety of sources. We And also we have very different company ages. Our oldest company that we're going to see was founded in 1988. And the hmm. most recent one was founded in 2023. So, um, you know, really quite a variety there and a big variety in terms of the subject matter. But some key areas that we're seeing uh, we're seeing a lot of people in the risk management and the compliance space. Obviously, this continues to be a pain point for financial institutions. We're seeing a lot of companies coming to us with small business solutions. Another group who I think it's been pretty widely documented really struggled uh, in the pandemic and in the aftermath of the pandemic. And so it's really good to see some solutions really targeted at that community and trying to ease some of the pain points there. Um, 
we're also seeing kind of the ever present as well user experience um, which covers so many different channels this kind of cross yeah. channel whether i'm calling in whether i'm you know engaging through the website or a mobile app or things like that there continues to be some uh, really good progress there yeah but the the most interesting one for us we've actually started this year offering scholarships for companies who are in who are active in um some of the the areas within fintech that we want to support so this will be the first year that we'll have some scholarship winners up there on stage and we have so what what are they get as a scholarship they, they get a free demo they get to come okay. and demo for free in front of the audience um, so we've got, you know, an environmentally focused scholarship. We've got a socially focused scholarship. Uh, we have a female founded company scholarship. And the idea really is just, again, to make the show accessible to some of these companies who are doing really good things that we want to encourage. And also, hopefully, to kind of give the industry a push by just sort of saying to everybody in the room, hey, this is what's possible. This is where mm -hmm. you could be pointing your technology and if we're able to, by elevating some of these companies, able to spur more of those conversations, then we'll consider that to be really successful. But I'm excited to see how our scholarship winners equip themselves up there on stage. It's something which is really, really fun for us to be able to do. And we'll be continuing to do it at the rest of our 2023 events as well. Thank you, Greg. So we are going to go now for a very short break, and we will be back in a minute with our two guests. And we are back to the show. Again, talking about Finnovate Europe. Uh, again, it's going to be next month uh, in March 14th and 15th of March in London. Still here with Theo and Greg. So, guys, in in the in the first part of the episode, we um, tackled some of the of the key points of the conference uh, and especially some some key points you are really much you are caring very much. Uh, and another one, another topic that I, I would really like you to um, to talk about is the sustainability side. Uh, so I know uh, at Finnovate you care a lot also about this, and uh, I know you are making quite an effort to make the event fully sustainable. So Greg, maybe you can uh, you can explain as uh, how you are doing that. Yeah, well, it certainly is something that we care a lot about. And so what we do, a lot of the pieces that we do are relatively basic, but still hopefully pretty effective. We have eliminated passing out uh, printed booklets. We've turned everything into um, digital. So it's all available through your phone or laptop when you're on site. We have really strongly discouraged uh, our sponsors and our demoers from passing out physical items at their booths. I think a lot of times those items um, end up just in landfills. And so it's one of those things where if we can help reduce the waste there, that's obviously a really good thing as well. Um, there's also this other side of a, a sustainable FinTech ecosystem. And, and this is another area that we really prioritize because if you don't have young companies who are kind of challenging the status quo, uh, then the industry itself suffers, right? You need that group of people to come in and you need this constant refreshing, these people who bring new ideas in. Um, and, and so we really do our best to support those companies as well through a, a new program that we call the Startup Booster, which is open to companies that are still very early on in their funding. We want to get them into the event. We want to let them see where uh, the, the bar is from a demo company standpoint. We also want to connect them with interested venture capitalists who can help take them to that next level. And our ultimate goal here is to ensure a healthy ecosystem in the long term where there continue to be new challengers coming in and pushing for some of the, or sorry, pushing some of the incumbents to do better. And if there are opportunities to go and exploit those opportunities, and ultimately this is kind of how the entire industry moves forward. So um, not only is it the environmental sustainability side, but it's the industry sustainability side that we're really focused on as well. Yeah, definitely. And Theo, about this, uh, what's your experience? Uh, so Greg was talking about giving the opportunity to new startups and fresh startups to get connected with the right people and get access to capital. Um, I know that you are uh, your job. Part of your job is also connecting the two parties. So what's your experience in that? I think it's actually a, an, an interesting discussion. Greg, didn't you remember a couple of years ago, we used to invite accelerators to bring their startups on stage. Mm -hmm. There were, I think at one point, that was one of them. There were like five, six different accelerators and they bring different startups on stage and give them the, the stage time to talk about 
normally what they would pitch investors. And I think those things are really important because if you think about barriers to entry, right? Barriers to entry, not just from a price point attending a conference perspective, but also how do you find people? Um, recently, I saw someone posted on Twitter says, hey, I, I want to get started on FinTech. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start, right? So these events, they give a front door view of here are the big trends. Here are the people. This is what people are talking about. This is where the money is going. And I think this is all part of helping to grow that ecosystem because things change all the time. And, you know, one of the things that some people like to say is everything is fintech. Well, then how do we go about changing and impacting the quote unquote fintech industry so that it works for more people? So inclusion definitely has to be part of that viability, long-term sustainability. How do we include different aspects of what's happening in society. Greg, earlier we were talking about, you know, the show being a mirror to the society, right? You look at it, you're like, okay, well, this reflects what's happening in the world. So what are some of the some what are some of the trends that people care about? And the startups, they need to be part of that to hear that. Yeah, definitely. Also because many times, you know, uh, an event like that, such a big event, can be a bit overwhelming for, for a lot of startups that are going there for the first time and say, okay, what should I do? I do my demo and then what? Uh, with whom can I connect? What should I do? And it's, uh, uh, I know it's, it's, it's not that easy. That's why also the, the networking part is something that it's, it's quite crucial for an event like this uh, also to, to maximize the chances of connections and success. Maybe Greg, you can tell us something also about that. What are you, are you planning to do? I know you are doing something uh, new on the side of networking. What is it about? Yeah, we've got a couple of new initiatives this time around. Um, there's one that I think should be really fun, though, which uh, I'm excited about. We're going to kick off one of the networking sessions with uh, a fintech game show that we're going to try out called Hot or Not. Uh, Theo is actually going to be a participant in in this. Um, you can see. But do you how, know how that, Theo? Whether you are going to be there? <laughs> are you ready? Um, I am born uh, it, ready. <laughs> oh, you'll be great, honestly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our panel of uh, contestants who uh, will we'll take some themes within fintech, and then they'll they'll have to argue that that aspect of fintech is either hot or it's not, as the name would suggest. At the end of each kind of mini debate, our audience is actually going to have signs that say hot or not that they'll so the audience will vote. Um, based on how persuasive the arguments were from stage. So for example, you know, we might start off and say, okay, hot or not in fintech, free drinks at networking and, and happy hour at fintech conferences. Presumably the, the hot crowd would probably win that one. Um, but it, it should be a really fun way to kind of uh, tackle some of these themes within fintech in a lighthearted way, but also it's, I think it'd be really interesting to see what our audience says about which trends they view as hot, which trends they view as maybe not being as interesting. So there will be definitely be a fun couple of minutes there, but also it will yield some really interesting results because in some cases, you know, the industry, as Theo said, can move very quickly and something which is a really interesting topic one year might no longer be that interesting to people in the audience the next. And so we'll, we'll have somebody at least write down which ones the audience <laughs> said were hot or not. Um, and I think it's going to be fascinating to see. Uh, so I think that should be a really fun one as well. And Theo, thank you in advance for participating in that. I know it's going to be a, a really good session with you in it as well. <laughs> You're welcome. As long as the audience is not allowed to throw anything on stage, I'm game. I did one <laughs> um, with a health tech event. It was after dark. It was similar. You had a panel of people. And um, and we had a little squishy toys, you know, the stress balls. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh no yeah that's I think I see um, where so, you're going <laughs> exactly so as long as you're telling the um, exhibitors do not give out free stress ball it would yeah be okay then you should be fine <laughs> yeah that's very nice you guys are thinking about all these new ways to to connect people and get get people engaged so it's uh it, it should be really a nice event and we are all looking forward to be to be there together uh, I have one last question for you both. So um, one for Greg, which is, uh, we, we said uh, that uh, there are a lot of companies going on stage doing their demo, some more experienced, some not really experienced at their first uh, first experience. So 
if you have to give a couple of advices uh, to them so they have still one month to to get ready which which one would 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 that be yeah no it's a it's actually a very timely question because i'm right now in the process of working with all the companies <laughs> who are going to be up there and so um even companies who are experienced and have technology that has been out for a long time sometimes still struggle with this format um, this is actually part of the reason that I now offer demo coaching outside of Finnovate. It's something which if you're interested in uh, getting learning more about that, look me up on LinkedIn or reach out to me, Greg at Finnovate.com. It is a passion of mine. But I think the yeah. biggest thing that I would say to companies who are going to be participating is to kind of take a step back from your own technology, take a step back from what you want to show. And think about it from the standpoint of the person on the other end, who's in that, who's in the audience, that person you really want to connect with. Why do they need to come and talk with you? And uh, what, what's what's in it for them, basically? What's the value proposition? And so distilling your message down to something that's going to be really accessible, really interesting for people on the other end, keeping it less about yourself and more about them is really important. And then also looking at the urgency, looking at the why now, why is this something which you can't afford to wait on any longer? And I think you know if you come to enough of these kind of events, you know the kiss of death for a demo at Finnovate is not, we don't like the technology. It's, oh, that's really interesting, but I've got too many other priorities right now uh, that I can't afford to look at that one, uh, one aspect. Maybe I'll come back to it in a couple of years. And, and that's really difficult. And I think this is a really big problem in the FinTech space in general, because so far, you, you know, a lot of financial institutions haven't really been punished too much for waiting a couple of years, being slow to adopt yeah. some of these technologies. And it's up to the fintech companies who are up on stage to articulate, here's why you need to act now. Here's what that opportunity cost is if you fail to take action here. And so, you know, looking at it from that standpoint, you can see it's quite a challenge for the companies who are going to be up on stage, even just articulating these kind of two basic sides of it. Why should you care? And why do you need to move now are, are really difficult questions. And every company up on our stage needs to be prepared to answer those questions or else they're going to struggle to get the audience's attention. Of course. And many times I think many teams are quite too technical, while on the other side, you don't have the same, you don't have people talking the same language. So you have to yeah. translate it to the business. So Theo, what's your, your advice for the startups? I I completely wholeheartedly agree on what Greg say. And by the way, he never he didn't mention this yet on the show. He does talk about dad jokes, and um, <laughs> and 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 it's but it it's a way to break the ice if you think about it, right? Is to help ease people. You you do that a lot, Greg, and 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 it, <laughs> and it's fun to watch. I, I think the one thing um, that really resonates what Greg just said is. Think about the person on the other end, right? You're not there to sell your solution. You are there to help so solve someone's problem. So what is it that is on top of people's mind right now? What are the problems that they want to solve? And how do you go about helping them instead of saying, hey, this is me. Come pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. So turn that around and have fun. Yeah. Your <laughs> part of that job is to entertain the crowd. Um it's a very weird way of thinking about it, but if you're just there and you're really boring and you're just talking <laughs> to the script, no one is going to pay attention to you. So, and it's also yeah. five. No, how how long is the pitch? Five minutes. Seven no, how, minutes. How, seven minutes. So it's like, yeah. come on, seven minutes of your life. It's it's it's, yeah, it's nothing basically. Yeah. Get <laughs> exactly. that energy up. Have that extra cup of coffee. You know, I don't want to alarm anybody with some potentially earth shattering news, but you know, fintech can actually get a little bit dry. It turns out <laughs> it is. So if you if you don't go out and actually figure out why how you gonna... say that, we yeah. always want to talk about the anti fraud mechanism and so on. Come on, I wake yeah. up with that in mind. <laughs> go go to a party, and uh, you know, as I always tell exactly. people, like if you're gonna up, up on stage, how would you explain to a group of people you just met at a party what it is you do for a living? And it's usually very very different how people would say it in that statement versus how they would do it at an industry conference. And I'm like, well, you need to bring more of that in. Um, and, and Theo, you know, you're spot on. You need to have the energy. You need to make it. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be entertaining, but you have to demonstrate that you care. You have you to care. appear on stage as though you're passionate about your own technology. Because if you're not interested from stage, why am I going to be interested as an audience member? Um, Definitely. So 
And again, we'll, we'll see. I think, I think, as I said, we've got a really good crop of demos this time around. I think they're going to do a really good job. Um, I would encourage anybody who's interested, come on out and see them for yourself. Get a sense of where the industry is at. And uh, we'd love to have you there. And we'd love to have you take it all in for yourself. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see all this lineup of amazing companies. So thanks a lot, guys. I'm really happy that I will be able to come and, and see um, myself what's going on in London on 14th and 15th of March. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thanks a lot, Theo. See you very soon. Thank you so and much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, thank you very much to our audience. Remember to follow Breaking Banks Europe on all streaming platforms and social media. And uh, see you next week. But most important, see you in one month in London at Finnovate Europe. Ciao. That's it for this week. If you like the show, make sure to give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform or share it with a friend or share it on social media. We'll see you again next week with more Breaking Banks.